Code agents, we've got a special guest today. Let's talk to Krista Schrader from Michigan. Krista, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. You're part of a dynamic duo. Your partner is not here, your husband, right? Yes. And but you're the you're the better one we wanted to talk to anyway, but don't tell him oh, that. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell him at all. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know Krista, she is a real estate agent who's newer to the industry, not, not even two years into this. Her husband's been in it for about six years. And as soon as she came in, they were able to work together really well and blow up their business from expired and for sale by owners. Now, that's the focus of today here. And she's going to go over the tools that she uses. She uses Espresso Agent, but more, more into... The, the dynamics of how she's been able to do this quickly. Because before you joined, Krista, your husband was doing pretty good, but then you guys just blew up, right? Yeah, I mean, it. I mean, we hit the ground running pretty much uh, last year. Great. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, Krista, you, you just jumped in, I would say, about a year and a half, maybe. Yeah. Into it would the have business. been August when I first joined, so yeah. End of August. Good, good. Yep. For expires and for sub owners, what did you find the most challenging thing to be initially? Because what industry did you come from? So I, I, I actually came from photography, but really, if you look at it, I was a stay-at-home mom for a year. But before that, I did photography. Um, and, you know, I was actually a pretty quiet person back then. Um, but I realized with my photography, even though I had the skill, if I didn't talk to people and I didn't know how to communicate with them why my product was better and they should buy it. Uh, you know, it, it gets a little hard then. Um, but when I joined on with Luke, something uh, that I noticed was that a lot of times people get frustrated when they talk to for sale by owners or expires because they're really emotional all the time. You know, one of them's just been super disappointed because I mean, they didn't sell their house like they were hoping to, and they had complete faith in a realtor, right? And then the other person yep. probably doesn't even trust you to begin with. And so instead of looking at it from an angle, especially for sale by owners, they need their, their hand held and they need to be, you know, educated. Now, it doesn't mean you have to sit there and berate them, right? And, and be like, you're wrong, or, you know, that's not how it works here. You almost have to approach it from this person just doesn't know, but I'm the professional and it's up to me. It's my job to help them understand. And in a way that it feels like I am giving them value and I am here. And if they have any question, no matter how ridiculous it is, I'm here to answer that for them. If that so makes sense. You, you, bring up a, you bring up a good point here. It's we're going to the very basics, all right? So we're starting with the basics and we'll go into the middle and then obviously the end at the end, right? So uh, I was talking to Richard Yoon. He's um, he's an agent on a team, but he's going to close about 70 transactions as a team member in DC. And most of his business comes from uh, expireds and for sale by owners, which is insane, right? 72 right. as a team member. Right, average price point eight hundred thousand. Oh wow, um, crazy! And he was saying the exact same thing you're saying right now. He says when I when I call up the expireds, my script isn't the whole Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, all these scripts that people use, which is you go straight into it. Hi, this is Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. I hope uh, you're having a good day. I noticed that your home was off the market. Are you planning on selling it? Um, no, right? Or they just hang up. He he starts very softly. And he said, he doesn't even ask if that's the person. He says, uh, hi, this is Tristan with Keller Williams. I was wondering if you're the, the owner of this home. Almost hesitant, very soft-spoken, good tonality. And he's talking to them like a person, not like a, a robot. Do you do something similar in the initial approach for, for expires? 
Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of, so the way that Luke and I approach it is we're trying to have a conversation with somebody. So yes, we, and, and I mean, I'll be honest, we have um, scripts, but the focus of the, the script is really just, we treat it like a guideline more. And I think some people, you know, take it literally where they're like, got a word for word, do this. I feel like a script is there to kind of lead you into a direction and kind of give you a direction to go to, but you need to ask questions to find out what the problem is. So like, you know, with an expired, what did they, you know, what did they feel dis most disappointed about with their last agent? Or if they're thinking of not even listing anymore, why is it because, you know, um, that opportunity has passed or is it just some other fixable issue that you might, might be able to help them with? But you can't do that if you're focused on a script because you're not asking deeper questions. Yeah, I, I agree. So scripts, just for everybody listening in, scripts for expires and for sale by owners, uh -huh. they're there to guide you into possible things to say and to help you guide the conversation. But like Krista's saying, uh, it, it's all about listening. That's what she's really telling yes. you. Just listen and make it a real conversation because people are tired of being talked to like they're being sold to, right? They, they need a real conversation. So Krista, what's that opening line that you think works best for you? First for expireds and then for, for sell by owners. So take me so, through that. What is it you look like? What so expireds like? are a lot um, more lenient. And I kind of pulled this from Barino, actually. Um, so awesome. he literally is like bare bones focus on just, you know, kind of getting to know them in a way and, and then agreeing with them. Because, right, we're very quick because we're the professionals to be like, no, you're wrong. So, you know, I'll be on the phone with them. I'll be like, hi. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Krista Schrader with Keller Williams Realty. I'm sure I'm not the first one to call you. Because already right away, what's the first thing they always say when you call them when they're an expired? Oh, you again. Oh, another realtor. Oh, my gosh. I've been bombarded. Oh, oh yeah. The nice the person. And, you know, and, and to be honest with you, when I hear somebody say that I am the 90th person, just a little, like, pro tip here. Um, so I know on our board, there's about 800, 900 maybe now agents. Um, I've found they only get around like 20 calls um, the whole time. They're kind of up there when people are calling them. So, you know, I say, oh, awesome. You should definitely look into one of the 20 of us because we called you. Did you know there's actually 900 agents on our board? So you kind of just <laughs> have that. But yeah, so, you know, I just, you know, kind of introduce with that. And I say, you know, I, I just called. I'm sure you know, just to see, are you still looking at listing your home? Or are you kind of holding off on that? And notice how I'm just, I'm not sounding super scripted. Yeah, it's I'm really very, just curious. Very <laughs> passive. Yeah. Very easy, not uh, pressing. Well, and the thing with expireds is they're sick of it already. They might have even been warned that you were going to call, you know, um, yeah. from the last agent or something like that. So you just. Sure. With them, you want to get to the point. So you don't want to jerk them around with some fancy opening and like, you know, you just want to kind of get to the point with them and ask them right away, are you looking, you know, to, you know, relist your home? And then, you know, sometimes you even get people that didn't even know their listing was off market, believe it or not. Yeah, that's very true. They'll be like, uh, especially if you call them early in the morning, you're the first one of the first few. Yeah. Um, especially if you're the first one, like, um, my, what, what do you mean my home's <laughs> yeah and I mean I think you know what to do from there um yeah. but yeah and then you know if they say why not you don't and I think this is where people realtors really get hung up is they hear you know um no and then they go oh well thank you have a great day and they get off the phone yeah this is where you're supposed to start asking questions no you know sometimes no is a is a not a solid no. So take you know? me through, Krista. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll lightly role play with you. I'll be kind. I'm not going to be a jerk. To you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just so that people understand the process. So right. you called me and I'm saying, hey, look, you're the, you, you're the 30th caller. I'm just, I'm a little tired of this. Um, right. What do you say then? And then I'll, we'll play right now. Oh, I, I totally understand. I'm I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sure it gets really annoying, right? Yeah, it's just it's it's too much sometimes. Where do you yeah. guys get our phone number from? Uh, so we just have
have a system that we call through because we notice it comes up as expired. So we were just calling and I really actually just, I don't want to waste your time. So I was just going to call to see if you were still interested in listing or not. And then, you know, just kind of go from there. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay. Well, a lot of stuff, it's just a lot of people calling me and maybe, maybe later. I just probably not right now though. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would be a good time to call you then? Um, I think, I think we just want to lay low for about three months just to process everything that happened. Cause there are a lot of people coming through our home and it didn't sell. I just, we're tired of, we were tired of putting it on the market and then just kind of being pulled one way thinking we were going to sell and it didn't happen. Uh, that's, so. that's so understandable. So what do you think, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think kind of, kind of happened to cause that? Well, it looked like our agent did a good job. I just, okay. I just think it's probably the market. Okay. And then if you don't mind me asking, you know, believe it or not, a lot of times a house doesn't sell because of the marketing. So, you know, I just, I was curious to ask that because I was just wondering what the marketing plan was for you guys. What did, what did your agent say was your marketing plan? Well, he was here having open houses and we had agents come through and I just, I don't know. I was, I was just hoping we would sell it. Okay. Um, well, you know, would you be, you know, knowing that there's actually a lot out there with the marketing stuff, um, would you be open to hearing what we would do to sell your home and our marketing package? Cause I think, you know, I noticed your listing went up around the end of fall into the winter. And I don't know if you know this, but the market kind of slows down in the winter. You probably know that, right? Yeah, we heard, we heard that it slows down in the winter. So we figured, let's see, November, December, January, maybe beginning of February. So we can kind of hit right before spring starts. That, that was the idea again. Oh, that was the idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah, you know, like something that you might not know is that in the winter you can still sell your home. It's just, it really comes down to the marketing during that time. So if your marketing isn't strong enough, that's when you start having a lot of people come through the house. Let me ask you this. Uh, did you get any offers during that time? No offers, no offers. We just kept on getting told that our home was, um, well, we had, we had verbal offers that were less. We just didn't want to go much less than our asking price. Okay. And then um, I didn't see it on here. How long were you listed for? Six months. Six months? Okay. And then did you, at all, just asking, did you drop the price at all? We did drop at one time by, by $1,000, but that was it. Okay. And then did your agent kind of have price uh, conversations with you at all? He just kept on telling me that we needed to drop the price. But not telling you why, kind of? Well, he said that everything else was selling around us and not ours, but ours is completely remodeled. And we just did the kitchen, the flooring, Right. The roof. So that's got to count that's for a lot. I, can I, totally, I don't want to give my home away, right? Right. And I can totally understand why you're tired, especially if you had it up for six months. That's exhausting. So, you know, if let's let's say this, let me what if I had a buyer that was interested in your house today? Would you still sell it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely want to sell it. We just don't want to go through the whole process of putting it back up and then having people come through the home. But if you had somebody that was ready, um, that changes everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure my wife would be like, "Yeah, let's let's do it." But yeah. So let's you know. do this. I know you guys are kind of tired, and I I hear you have a wife, so I'm sure she would have to be on board as well, and I would want her to be. Yeah. So okay, how about this? Let's sit down sometime this week, maybe Wednesday, and I'll go over what we do to market homes. And then when you're there, if you still want to take some time off and stuff to relax, you know, and and you know, list it later, that's fine. Um, but like I said, I, I really believe in our marketing and I think you'd like what I had to show you so you actually understand what we're doing, um, you know, and what all of that entails. What, would you what, be open uh, to that? What is it that you do differently with your marketing? Well, that would be best explained in person because I actually have a packet for you and I'll actually send it out ahead of time. And then you just write down all the questions you have. And when I get there with my husband, because we're actually a team that works together, we'll be uh -huh. able to better, you know, answer your questions. Plus your wife will be sitting there. So if she has any questions as well, I can answer them for her. Okay. Let me, let me talk to my wife and then I'll, I'll tell you what day is good. Is that okay? That sounds good. You should do that, Tristan. Talk to your wife. I love it. All right, you're doing a great job. You know what? 
Chewbacca. <laughs> Chewbacca story. He says, what? He says. <laughs> yeah, all right. You say your scripts were amazing. Thank you. But you did a great job. See, what I love is that you didn't, you, you know what to say. You know when to say it. But more importantly, you came across as completely authentic and genuine. Right. right? And that's what you didn't sound like a robot. You were like, it almost felt like you were, you probably do this on purpose, but you, you automated it in your brain to happen automatically here. Right. What you do is you're very soft spoken, but you're direct in a kind way. And yeah. you purposefully hold back and say, uh, you, you do the um part, which makes it seem like you're just thinking of it, but you're not. And yeah. so I love that because it almost sounds like you're listening and you're trying to come up with what you're going to say next, but you already know. Right. And I want to be their problem solver, you know, yeah. like, let me help you. Like you said, you were tired. So I'm not going to super push you. I'll let you know what your options are. So I gave you two options, right? I said, yeah. you can have a break if you need it. <laughs> Sorry, Chewy, Chewy just went off. Hold on. Let me put him over here. <laughs> there we go. Stay there, Chewy. Yeah, you, you could have a break or, you know, if you felt it was strong enough market, you list right away, you know, whatever you decided. So I love, I love your approach. Uh, it's, it's needed a lot more in the industry in yeah. comparison to people just going straight into it and saying, uh, really going at it and saying, well, your home didn't sell because of marketing. Here's why, right? Right. Uh, you, you, what, you're doing what uh, one of my friends and coaches says. Uh, he's not an expired or for sale by owner coach. He's just a, a scripts dialogue person. His name is Dale right. Archdeacon. And he says, follow the no. And what you did is you followed the no. So you're asking questions as to why they're saying no. You're not saying, hey, here's a solution, right? right. You're saying... Hey, so why do you think that, right? What, what happened here? And then, and then once you've gained that trust, which you did, then you told me, hey, I've got a solution for you. Um, it sounds like this is your real problem, right? Mm -hmm. let, me, let me help you. Right. By asking questions and talking to you more and letting you speak, I was able to find the problem and therefore I was able to give you a solution for that. Yeah, and I find that your style matches more of the industry's agents as a whole, because most agents are not drivers. Uh, most people are not drivers, period. There's a small percentage of drivers. Uh, most people are expressive and amiable. That's the majority of the world's population. Yes. And I'm a and 99 so one, guy, so I'm super <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm amiable. That's my, I lead with uh, S, believe it or not. And then uh, when I'm pushed to a corner, I'm a driver. Or when I need to get things done, I'm a driver. So I'll be a jerk sometimes, but not always. <laughs> Only uh, on people who call it you as an expired. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I love your approach because that's my approach. I, I don't go all in and just talk your ear off about shit about me, about shit they don't want to talk about. Uh, it's about you, the consumer. Right. And I love that approach. To me, you're going to get a lot more doors open because you're talking my language, right? Right. And if you don't want to talk to me and I'm the agent, that's okay. I'll go to somebody who wants to listen to my approach. And yeah. that's the majority of people, by the way. So I love, I love your approach. Do you do the same thing with for sale by owners? So yes, the concept of asking them more questions, yes. And, and to go back to your point as well, um, you know, like I know Jeff Glover has said this before, where you know, a lot of us are so focused on talking in our language, right? So I yeah. will talk like a high eye all day to another high eye or whatever, and maybe even to other people, but we actually need to focus on talking to the other people, right? Yeah, I and agree. I think that's where people get stubborn. So especially, and this is where I think it goes wrong with for sale by owners, right? Um, a lot of them, first off, don't even want to talk to you. And then I just feel like a lot of them tend to be, you know, uh, some of them are C's, some of them are D's and stuff. Um, and it could be a situation they're in. Um, but they just, you can't just shut down on them, you know, because they're yeah. agreed. Rash to you. So here's, here's the, what we discovered. So I've been calling 
expired and for sale by owners since 2004. And one thing that we discovered very quickly was identifying the personalities of these for sale by owners. Right. And that's, they're only going to be for like 99% of them, or maybe even higher, they're going to be two things, drivers and analytical. That's it. Because you'll never find an amiable listing their home as a for sale by owner, right? It just will not work. <laughs> my house up for sale by myself and, or an expressive, right? Yes. Going, hey, I put my house up for sale and telling everybody it's just not going to work. Right. But an expressive. Yes. Yeah, but an analytical is going to be like, well, look, I've already got all the systems. I've, I've interviewed seven agents and I know everything they're going to do, so I'm going to do it myself. Right. Right. And that's what, you know, one of his points was, was when you ask more questions, you also find out, you know, what their personality is. Sometimes you're just asking the question to find out the personality that they have. So take right? me through, yeah, take me through the for sale by owner one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually do use one of his scripts for that. Um, so, okay. Do you how do you open it up? Because I find that's a challenge sometimes after we're calling and we say, Hey, uh, this is Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. I noticed that, oh wait, are you, are you the owner of the home? And they're like, yeah, I'm the owner of the home. Great, I'm calling to see if this home is still available. And they're like, yes, it is. Um, so I, great, I'm a real estate agent. Are you cooperating with an, with an agent for uh, whatever? And they're like, oh, an agent. Um, you know, no, we're not. Or yes, we are. But yeah. what's your approach there? Because I find that a lot of people drop off there. Where do they drop off at? The they drop off after we ask, if they're cooperating with an agent or if when they say, oh, you're a real estate agent, right? We're not, we're not working with a real estate agent. Oh, that's so that's where, we, where they drop off? Yeah. Okay. They want to just yeah. Tell, okay. Take me through that. Yeah. Okay. So pretend you're going to tell me now. Okay. So you just call me. You're like, is it, is, is this home still for sale? Right. And I'll be so, like, yes. So it's I, know, I go and pretty much say something very similar actually to what you say. I say, um, mm -hmm. you know, Hi, my name is Krista Schrader. I'm just calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I was just calling for, you know, a few reasons. I just want to ask you like two questions if you have some time. Uh, are you cooperating with any real estate agents that bring you any buyers? Um, what do you mean by cooperating? I'm glad you asked because some people get confused with that. So, you know, basically if I had a buyer you know, and they want it to be represented. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, does that mean I have to pay you commission? Well, you know, everything's negotiable, but I will say it might turn them off if you don't want to pay any of the commission. Typically, we see most of the listings, the sellers will pay that. So they might move on to another listing because of that. All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess if you bring me a qualified buyer who gets into contract with us, I pay you a commission. Okay, cool. And, and we don't need to even talk about that yet right now. Um, so I actually like to ask ahead of time about that. I, I don't know if I have any particular buyer for you right now, but I just like to ask out of respect for you guys, because I know for sale by owners don't always like agents being around. So I'll go ahead and forward those people on, okay? You're listening. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then just, you know, another quick question. Now, I noticed you've been up here for like three days, so I don't expect anything to change really. But I was just curious, uh, you know, if you didn't sell your home on your own, you'd be hiring an agent at some point. So what's your plan if you can't get it sold on your own? Well, um, we've got a good plan. I, I, I've done this once before seven years ago, and we didn't uh -huh. need it then. Um, so we're just going to we, – we've already put it on – on the MLS through um, through a friend of mine who's not charging me any money. He's just helped us put it there. And then we put it up on Craigslist and then, uh, and then that's it. So I've already gotten quite a few people calling me. Uh, if, if it doesn't sell in, in about, which I, I don't know if it, I don't even know if it'll get that long, but if it doesn't sell in like three months and we'll, we might think about doing something else. Okay. So Craigslist, and then what was that other thing you mentioned? Your your friend um, put it up for you guys, but he's yeah, not. He put like, it up on the MLS as a. Um, we're we're not we're not offering any commission. You just put it up there for free. Okay, okay. So a limited listing service type you of thing. What we typically okay. Um. So you know, if you don't mind me, you know, telling you this. So the limited listing services are great. Um. 
However, after two weeks, and I see you're newer again, this could totally work for you. After two weeks, I would recommend actually taking that off. Oh, really? Why is that? What, hap what happens? So, you know, on RMLS, you're on something called a hot sheet pretty much for the first two weeks or so uh, that you put your listing up there. So that's kind of the benefit of it. And that's where the marketing comes in, where you pay that flat, well, usually pay the flat fee to have it put up there. The only thing is, is that after those two weeks, you know, you're familiar with Zillow, I assume. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of, it turns into that after that, where an agent actually has to be looking for your kind of home and their buyer needs to be looking for your kind of home. It's not really being pushed out anymore. So the marketing so aspect of that's gone. That I do. So what do you suggest that I do differently then? So, you know, I know, you know, let me ask you this. Why uh, did you list for sale by owner, if you don't mind me asking? Well, you know, I just, I never understood why a real estate agent needs to take 6% of the commission. Um, oh, yeah. Percent of the purchase price. It's a, for, for the really amount bad. of work that, yeah. I mean, for the amount of work that they do, it's just like, I mean, not, nothing against you. I don't know you. Oh, no, no. But I hear this all the time. You're totally I mean, 6% fine. 6% is a lot. It is. And, you know, especially if you don't understand where it's going, I think that's your concern, right? Is that we're just pocketing a good chunk of it, right? Well, I mean, for, for nothing, right? Like we're just putting it on the MLS. Yeah, I mean, every every agent I I see is driving like a BMW and a Mercedes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. yeah. So you know, and I'm not saying that there's not some people out there like that. I'm sure there are. I can tell you, as far as we are, uh, we do charge the six percent. But let me kind of break it down for you and kind of show you where we're going with this. So okay. we offer 3% to the other agent because let's theoretically say, right, you've got your house and another house and they're very similar. And we like to pretend it's a perfect world, but it's not. So we're gonna protect you from that. One is offering 2.5% commission, or you are, and then the other one is offering 3% commission. Which one do you think their salesperson might try to sell them more? Well, I mean, if we just go off of the, um, just the basics of being a human, right? The one that's offering some type of compensation that's, that's right. higher. Right. So yeah. I wouldn't want to put you in that position to start. Now, on our end, we have 3%. Now, if you take three fingers here, I guess I'm on the phone with you. <laughs> if yeah. you take three fingers, right? Um, so you take a percentage away because our brokerage is going to expect us to pay them something, right? You already knew that. Um, and then also we're going to be marketing your home, which I can explain to you in person where all that goes. So you're going to take another percentage off, right? Now what's left? That's what I take home, right? Now, let me explain this. And this is where you're going to want to be cautious. If you do go, you know, look for another realtor, your friend's doing an awesome favor for you. But as far as listing, this is where you're going to want to be careful. That, that piece where the brokerage takes money from me, that's not going away, right? That's non-negotiable. Okay. My bills, I think, you know, are non-negotiable. I have kids, right? We're not going to not put food on the table. It's not going to a BMW. That's what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. And now what we have left is the marketing piece. And is that really mine or yours? Well, you're going to be using that to hopefully sell the home that I have here. Yeah, I see Absolutely. what you're saying. So would you want me to take from your marketing budget in order to sell your home for a lower commission? All right, look, I see what you're saying. I, yeah. I see what you're saying. All so right, do you so. think if you, if you look at all that, right, do you think it might actually be worth it to kind of look into maybe hiring an agent and see if it well, makes sense? I mean, what do you what do you do differently in your marketing than than the rest of the agents out there? Why well, why, why wouldn't I go with somebody like that's doing it for yeah. let's say four percent or five percent? So could is it fair to say that may that is one of your fears that if you hire an agent they won't be working for you, right? You don't really see them, right? Working for you. That's true. Okay. So let's um let's do it this way then. How many calls have you received? Uh, uh, I can't keep count. You can't keep count? Yeah, probably over 50. Over 50? Did you know there's 900 agents on the board? <laughs> no, I didn't know there were a lot, that many of you. Yes, and 
I was only one of those 50 to call you, right? Yeah. So I hopefully just helped you narrow it down to who you should be interviewing, right? Okay. That's true. I, I like I like that you called me. I like your approach. So thank you. Yes. So, you know, going back to uh, to that piece of it, of, you know, worrying about if I would work for you or not. So you know I would work for you then because I called you today, right? Of course. Yeah. I see that you're hustling. Yes. So, you know, what if you... Would you be open to sitting down with an interview with me? I could show you where that marketing money will go for you yeah. to work for your benefit. And then are you the only one on title? Okay, well, well, can we do this? It's, it's, it's just me, but can, okay. we, can we see how it goes for, let's say, three weeks or a month on my part? See if I can sell it. And then if it doesn't, um, what I'll do is I'll keep your number here at the top, and then I'll reach out to you in about three weeks if – for any reason, I don't sell my home. Yeah, I mean, and we could totally do that. Um, on the other flip side of this, I actually could still help you if you sold it on your own. Did you know that? Oh, really? How's that? So well, I've noticed a lot of people, I'm, I'm sure you know you negotiate the price, right? Yeah. Did you know that you also negotiate other things like repairs and all that other stuff? Uh, I usually just sell it as is, and if they don't like it, they could go buy something else. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So did you know also that NAR has a statistic, National Association of Realtors, that I think it's around 85, I might, it might be 95 percent of people are represented by an agent. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know it was that high. What that I, means is, yeah. And what that means is you're going to actually see a lot of contracts coming your way because there's a good chance that someone represented is going to be buying your listing, right? That's, that's true. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So one of the services I actually offer for a flat fee, and again, this is if you pend it in those few weeks, um, I'd love to come kind of explain it to you, but I do it for a flat fee and I kind of help you with the paperwork. Now I can't advise you and I can get into more detail. It'd be a lot easier in person to explain. Um, but I would love to explain it to you about how that could be beneficial to you. Cause I could actually provide you with contracts as well, protecting you. It's the same ones we all use. Okay. Uh, that might work. Maybe you can help me through the paperwork part of it. Do you have some time later today to meet up? Yeah, absolutely. And do you mind me bringing some of that? You know, I'll, I, I know you're not looking the list right this second. Do you mind me bringing some of that marketing material with me? We could just knock it out. And if you're, yeah, while you're here, just give it to me. And then, um, but I'm really interested in seeing how you can help me with the paperwork part of it. Yeah, though. no, right. absolutely. I just want you to know all your options. Awesome. So how about okay. Tuesday? or you said today. Um, yeah. How about today at uh, two? Uh, can you do it anytime after 5 p.m.? Yes, I can. All right, let's do that. All right, awesome. I'll see you then. Awesome. I love, um, I was a little more aggressive with you on that one because that's <laughs> how they are as for so Yeah, owners. they are. Um, but that was really good. I wasn't too mean, right? No, no, you were good. And, yeah. and one of the things I do is like, look, so for sale by owners or follow-up people, like, there's a good chance you're going to get a no with them. And so you need to be able to follow up with them. Now, my last ditch effort, I don't know, you probably caught it there, was as I can help you with the transaction. Yeah, so, I noticed that. Yeah, what ends up happening there is I end up going and explaining that. But what I actually end up doing is also explaining what an agent does without them really actually realizing that's what I'm doing. Because I can tell them when I'm there, right? I asked you if I could bring my marketing stuff, so I'm leaving that with you right? And then when yeah. I'm sitting there telling you what I can do as a transaction coordination, you know, service, I tell you, I can't advise you. I can't do this. Only an agent that represents you can do that, but I can do this. And along the way, they're kind of actually learning the benefits of listing with me versus handling everything themselves. Yeah. The point is to get in front of them in person. Right. Right. And that's, that's what you did. I love that. Here's one thing that we do as well, and I love that you did that. Um, when I brought up the commission, you right. didn't leave it as a mystery. And it's like, well, it's negotiable, which I think is a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, I feel like everyone says it's negotiable. Like, Come on already. You know I, we're I gonna bring it Amazon to you. And, Google, <laughs> and I, I see everything now because of the internet. Don't make the commission a mystery. Just right. fucking tell me what it is next, right now, right? Right. Right. And, and I'll be honest, I don't, I don't hop right into that. I try to leave that out unless it's something they keep pressing on and they live. Yeah. If I'm asking you, I want to know. 
right? Because right? if, if you're not telling me as, a, <laughs> as the consumer, I'm the consumer, you're the agent. If I ask you and you're not telling me, I already feel like you're hiding something. Like, especially right. if I'm a driver or an analytical, which right. I am if I'm a for sale by owner. And yeah. if you're already hiding that, I'm going to be like, well, pfft, I'm not going to trust you because yeah. drivers, yeah. their biggest fear is being taken advantage of, right? So yes. I love that you told me your commission. That was, to me, it broke down the barrier. I'm either going to tell you yes or no, but that at least made me feel like I could trust you over the phone. Right. Like, okay, good. I'm not playing with another one of these people who are not telling me. Right. And the, and right there, I kind of communicated to you. The reason I would say no to you trying to negotiate my commission is nothing to do with me and everything to do with, I wouldn't be able to offer you the service I'm telling you I'm going to offer you. And you now know that because I showed you how I break it down. Right. And yeah. this is what all it's going into. Cause when I'm with them, I, you know, show them where it's going. So you're only hurting yourself. And because of that, I refuse to, you know, lower it because I would only be hurting you. And I will not promise someone this kind of service if I know I can't deliver it. Yeah. But you weren't combative either on the right. phone, which is nice. Don't definitely yeah. don't beat them over the head with it. Like yes. this is for your own good. Like yeah. no. you're not telling me what to do. <laughs> You yes. were just very suggestive and it's an approachable. Option. Yeah. yeah. And I love that because as soon as you tell somebody what to do over the phone, it's over. Right. Right. And, and again, back to the, even the, the part about the buyers, um, I don't like communicating that I have a buyer. Like I just don't, I think they hear that enough. So I, I just right. clarify, I, I might, I might not, I'm going to pass it on now that I know you're okay with working with, you know, a buyer. That's represented. Oh, I love your approach. You can tell it's you've internalized the scripts to make them you. Yes. And that comes out as super authentic, super genuine, and you're able to connect to a lot more people. And right. that's awesome. Congrats on that part. Yeah. Thank you. And I think a big piece of it too, which was some great advice from my friend Kate Simon, was she actually um told me the most, one of the most important things to focus on was just objection handlers as well, right? Because you can really just use that with expires and for sale by owners. I mean, as yeah, long as- you can actually use those anywhere for sellers. Right, because the script's the guideline, but if you know how to handle the issues they're having, then you can solve the problem and then communicate so, that to them. With scripts, where are you going to learn them and practice them? Where have you, where have you found is the best place for you? Like, you mean like environment? Um, no, like where, where do you get your scripts? Oh, where okay. Yeah. yeah. So I actually do uh, get the scripts from Glover U um, on their website. It's actually free. They have expired, which I do sometimes, you know, I kind of take some stuff from there as well. Um, but my favorite on there is the for sale by owner without a doubt. Um, I cool. use that one all the time. Um, and then also just Barino's um, expired system was really great. Uh, in the system, he had some flashcards uh, with objection handler type stuff on there. Um, so you kind of just went through those every day and could kind of, you know, strengthen that. Because I think that's another big piece of it is when people are told no, they don't know what to do next. You that's know? true. That's true. I've, I've used Barino's expired system. And that, I think, is it expired university? Is that what it's called? I think or? it. I think it is. It's been a while. I, we still use his stuff and it's amazing. Yeah, I love that. stuff is insanely good because he only focuses on expireds and for sale by yeah. owners. That's, yeah. that's what makes it different. Uh, let me look it up right now. Borino, it's yeah. a called expired university, I think. Expired. You know, while I'm looking this up, can you tell me your process for, for calling expired? So in the morning, you wake up, you mm -hmm. turn on espresso agent and then you start dialing or what does it look like? Tell me. So we actually just hired a buyer's agent. So it, it changed a little bit on her end, at least when we hired her, because up until we hired her, we actually only ever used espresso agent. And so we would wake up every morning, drop the kids off. Um, and then we would get to the office and we role play with people basically every morning. Now, every once in a while we drop off of that because we're only human. Um, <laughs> but we try to be, you know, disciplined with it and at least have a few role play partners every morning just to get that practice in right. Because like I may be on this webinar, but I assure you in the morning, I am so nervous to go talk to anybody because I don't even feel like I'm speaking human yet. And it just helps kind of get 
you know, those jitters out and, you know, all the mess ups kind of tend to come out during the role play and you get good practice. So I do a role play. It takes about 15 minutes every day with somebody and not always somebody with the same personality as me, which I think is something else to consider, right? Because who you're going to call isn't always yourself. And then I hop on espresso agent. And so we, Luke and I usually split them up. One of us does expireds, the other does for sale by owners. And then when the other gets bored, we kind of flip them. So yeah, we go through there and then we go through the follow-ups after we call the newer people. And I think that's where people, and it's something I actually learned is that follow-up is where you get the most people. And I believe it was Barino and even, even Glover U says that it takes about like eight contacts before you actually can probably convert somebody or have a good chance at doing that. And people need to stop quitting when they get the first no because of that, right? Like that knowledge alone should keep you following up with people. But that, that's, our, that's our most important part of the day. So as long as we get that right, we'll be okay. The rest of the stuff kind of just falls into place for the afternoon. And, you know, we do some admin stuff. Um, if we don't hit a certain amount of numbers when we call people, um, so like Luke and I, we try to hit 20 contacts a day. And again, we're human. Sometimes we don't, but you really want to sit down and do that because people need to look at it like this. If you don't sit down and hit the 20 contacts, you're saying no to a paycheck 90 days from now. So every day that you do that and saying tomorrow, you're really just saying, I don't want to get paid 90 days from now. Wow. Yeah. And if it. it takes eight contacts, you just made it even longer to get that listing, you That's know? True. Yeah. That's very, very true. Okay. So what time are you calling your expireds and for sale by owners? Do you oh, have a specific time? So we actually have... It's like usually nine, nine thirty, depending um, on how well my two year old gets in the car. Uh, <laughs> I'm just being honest. And yeah. So yeah, we're in the office around nine, nine thirty. We get on the phones and then we we stop calling around eleven thirty. And I think that some people are kind of, you know, surprised to hear that. Um, and sometimes we call from home because like right now everybody's getting sick. Um, but you know, just because we have a agent now that's also on the phones i think a lot of people just go cool now i can cruise all morning long and you know just go on appointments the rest of my life you're really supposed to be generating a lot more business and not just you know quitting yeah i agree i love what you said there which is look i, I get i start calling around 9 or nine thirty, depending on on my my baby right yeah, I try to be real about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hate hearing from the different sources that, you know, the, the, this is your morning routine, right? Yeah. And the morning routine takes like two to three hours. And I'm like, hey, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's not going to happen. And I think uh, the thing is, is that the whole goal is to really, you know, just get get as close to it as you can and follow it as well as you can you know, I mean, that's the best, the best thing you can do, <laughs> but definitely follow something, you know, the advice I always give is first look at, look at your life and see how you can fit it into your lifestyle. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think Gary Keller said something along those lines about planning your vacations first and then planning your business around that. You, yeah. He's got it. He's got it right. You plan, you plan your, your business around your lifestyle. If you've got kids, right. you're, your schedule is going to look a lot different than mine. I've got two kids, but they're a little older, eight years old right. and 13. So they right. go to the school. They're in by 8.15. I'm back. I can start calling at 8. Right. right. And or I'll eight. tell you, I have a time. So I actually do time block. And one of the time blocks in my day is actually spending time with my kids from 4.30 to 7. If my two-year-old's feeling like a party person, maybe that's 8. But, you know, that, I have that blocked out because somewhere you have to be living or else what are you working for you know exactly i yeah. agree all right so what what is what is it that you like or love about espresso agent the tool so do you use the dialer do you use the what, what do you use about it that you like so we use the dialer we use all the information there are information 
out of all the ones that we've used has been the most accurate. And the nice thing about them is even if they can't get the number, let's say, they have the email or they, you know, there's just so many like drops of information you can go off of there. And then I just really love their dialer. That thing like never dies on me ever. It's great. It doesn't cut out, you know, when I'm yeah. talking to people. Yeah, the quality is really great. And right on the screen is kind of like a notes section and it already time dates it for you as soon as you start typing. So I can write, you know, everything they're telling me, right? Because I'm supposed to be understanding them and their situation. And if it takes eight follow-ups, I'm going to forget by then. <laughs> just, again, I'm a, I'm a human. <laughs> but also the best feature I think is that you can schedule a follow-up with them while you're still in that window. So while you're on the phone with them. Well, that, that was actually my, my question with you. Once you, once you schedule that follow-up on Espresso Agent, then it pops up on the day that you scheduled it for when you pop open Espresso yes. Agent so you know to follow yes. up. Yes, so when I go to do the follow-ups, it makes it real easy. I look at the day, and then I see all the people that I need to be following up with has the number right on there. So I just, you know, dial it up and I can see my notes. So I remember what we talked about last, all that kind of stuff. And then of course, even on the initial call, one of the things I like, and I know some others have this too, but they have Trulia and Zillow buttons and you hit that, you can see the listing right away. Got it. So that's the nice thing. You can see if it was, you know, relisted because God knows you don't want to, you don't want to be calling that one in the first place because um, things change quick. And then, um, the nice thing about it too is when you're talking to a for sale by owner, let's say, you know, they think you're kind of BSing them and you're just calling them on a system, which yeah, we are, but I actually do care about you. And so, oh yeah, I see you, you did a lot of work to it. That's a great kitchen. I noticed that beautiful, you know, statue of David in there. It looks fantastic. <laughs> like, you know, so it's, it's really nice. Helps you be the um, professional. Okay. And then, what what is it that you do when you're following up with them? What's your scripts usually like? Does it depend on the notes or are you just saying one specific thing? So let's say you're following up with me. I told you I wouldn't list until next year. When yeah. when are you gonna follow up with me again? So this is where I guess you could call me passive. Two weeks later, what does that look like? I guess you could call me passive aggressive here because mm -hmm. I'm not going to pressure you into listing with me when I go to follow up with you. So I'm going to be like, Hey, this is Krista Schrader. You know, I'm just calling in to check in. I know we talked back in March and then I might, you know, if they said, and I always make sure I do this. If they said something about like, you know, Oh, we're going to move with my son or, or my son's going to college. So we're trying to get out of here or whatever. I will be like, hope you're, everything with your son's college is going great. You know, um, I just check it in. Are you still looking at listing your home again? And this time is the time frame still the same? And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, it is. Sometimes they're like, you know what? No, I just got a new job. I need to move right now. Right? So I'm not, I, I'm not aggressive there, but my follow-up is. So like my rule of thumb is in the time that I tell them I'm going to follow up with them. So let's say, oh, I'll follow up with you in January. And it's like August. I'm probably actually going to follow up with you like either next well, probably next month. <laughs> and then I'm going to keep doing it every month because the goal is, is, again, people want the person that's going to work for them. Right. So if you're following up all those months, they're actually like, wow, she remembered me and I didn't even promise her anything. You know, got it. I love that. I like love if that. I'm I working that like, yeah, if I'm working like that for something, I'm not even sure is, you know, mine, well, then she's probably going to work even harder when it's actually listed with her. That's true. And that's all subliminal. So, yes, I agree with you on that. Yeah. So, Justin has a question. What do you say when you call your 20 contacts? And what if you don't have a big database because you're newer? Um, I think on the, what do you say with your 20 contacts? I really think it depends on who you're contacting. Yeah. We've gone through for sale by owners and expired. So, right. that's answered. But what if you don't have a big database because you're newer? What would you do? What would so, you do, Krista? So, well, is this a Facebook person? Uh, this one is here on the webinar section. Okay. Okay. So, I didn't have, you know, my husband had his own database, but... It, when I came in, I was very adamant that he didn't help me. <laughs> so I started with virtually nothing. And I'll tell you this, 
And again, we didn't pay for anything till recently when we hired somebody, just as a little perk for them even. So I got on the phones and I called every single day until I talked to somebody. So my first week that I was working, you know, as an agent, I day one got a listing appointment with somebody. And then I think it was the next day or sometime during that week, I had already got the second one. And I would just call the whole day until I, you know, got somebody. Or if I didn't, you know, I did till I went home, you know? And so you I, I was calling from? expires and FISBOs. You, if you don't have a database, like go out and start finding one because I mean, like that's, that's what I did. I just called people like crazy. Um, I know Nikki Klein, she runs a mom Facebook group. Those are things you can think about. We have a Facebook page that Ellie uh, Soudan helped us build. Um, she, yeah, we got like 6,000 people on that. I can't remember how much she had, but you know, things that make you look like the local professional. So, you know, the mom group, mom groups, I don't know if you're in one Tristan, but people ask a lot of questions there. And one of the questions they tend to ask is actually, um, and this is what Nikki taught me is actually, you know, who's a good realtor in the area or like, I'm thinking of selling my house and I think maybe I should paint my walls brown or, you know, something like that. She taught me to put um, myself as I have to approve every comment or post, I guess, on that group. And because of that, since I'm the only person that sees that before it ever enters a group, I can reach out to them and be like, hey, did you need any help? I'm actually a realtor. You know, there's ways to kind of build a database on the site, but I think you really need to get on the phones first um, or, you know, print out all the expires in your area. You can do that. Um, but you need to do that because those people already are pretty much raising their hand and saying, I'm trying to sell my house because they either listed with somebody trying to sell their house or they're for sale by owners. So they're already in the thick of it. You just need to communicate with them. Makes sense. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. Let me see if we have any other questions. I love that. I, I, I shared all of the links. Uh, 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 uh. No, got that one answered. We answered that one. There were a lot of questions we answered while you were doing the script. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, anything you want to add? Oh, David, her on your best scripts of all. Oh, what? Dave's asking, what do you have a best script of all time? Like the one that you go to to try to close the most? I really like that for sale by owner from the Glover U script. I mean, like I, I have a tattered one. It's a year old now and there's doodles all over it. Like I will not trash that thing ever. It's just, it's very good at leading into the questions because it has that starting point, but it has a lot of questions for you. And those questions usually lead into, you know, their, their problem, like even an appraisal or not appraisal, um, but pricing issue, let's say, you know, you ask them, okay, if you don't mind me asking, like, how did you arrive at your price or something like that? Mm -hmm. And you know, what, what that helps me lead into is okay. And how long ago did you, you know, figure that out and they'll tell me they did it on Zillow and they looked at the things that were for sale. So then I am able to tell them, did you know an appraiser actually looks at the last six months of things that have sold and you told me you checked the price on yours a year ago. So you're comparing them to data a year ago. And if you wanted me to, I could give you an updated analysis because I totally get why, you know, you thought that, but, um, you know, I would hate for you to get 40, almost 40 days into the transaction and have to go back up for sale because the bank said they're not going to fund the buyer because it's not worth that amount. That makes sense. I think your success with, with the scripts is your approach and your tonality and, yeah. and your, your genuineness. So I think that you could pick up, you could pick up Mike Ferry's scripts and turn it around and make them amazing. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You have to give yourself a lot Are of. Are you saying I can make Mike Perry sound pretty? Yeah, I mean you can, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of people can. So it's all in the approach. So congrats on on having that Thanks. that authenticity. And I think I hope people are that listened in can catch that because if they can tone down their aggressiveness and come yeah. from a point of curiosity, that'll really open up the doors to a lot and more transactions. I think the big thing too, if I had to tell anyone anything about how to, you know, talk to people, learn the scripts, but not to 
spit the scripts back out. Learn the scripts so you know what direction you're going and then make them your own. Like style. Be like your authentic self. And of course, you know, if you're talking to, let's say, um, my arch nemesis, a high C, uh, they don't want to hear me talking forever. <laughs> or, or uh, you know, even like a, a high D doesn't want to hear me going on and on. They want me to get to the point. Um, so, you know, just being aware of who you're talking to as well, though, and then also, you know, respecting that. So if they're a high C and they want more information, well, at least now you know because you asked them questions and they told you all the work they did in their house and it's down to every last detail. Now you know you should probably bring stats with you or something like that. That's very true. Very, very good point to, yeah. to end, end this. Uh, Krista, thank you so much. What area yeah. do you cover so that if people do have questions, they can send you referrals? Yeah, so we're based out of Kalamazoo, but we cover Southwest Michigan. Southwest Michigan. So just anything in Michigan, South. Yeah, so West. like, hold up. Okay. I'm sure you've seen this, Tristan, because Nick, we are down here. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. So when you think of Michigan, think of Krista and send her any referrals that you've got. Krista, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We love that you use Espresso Agent because we do too. So yes, they're great. Thank you and thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, say hi to your husband. I will. <laughs> Bye. Bye.